Hello world, it's Hamster68 here, and today I've got something really cool to show you that I built in Minecraft. Uh, the problem is, is that it'll, it needs some explanation. It's not something I can just show you and you'll fully understand. So let me do some backstory on it. What I have built is a simple addition computer in Minecraft that adds binary numbers up to a certain amount of digits. And in order for me to tell you how it works, I have to explain a little bit about how binary numbers work. So they work through logic gates. This is an AND gate. The left side here um, is one input, and this is the other input, and then the right side is the output. So in an AND gate, they both have to be one in order for you to get an output of one. It's pretty simple. Then if we look at the exclusive OR gate, we see that there's something a little different. It's the same inputs as earlier, but an exclusive OR gate only gives an output of one if one of them is one. So if they're both zero or they're both one, they'll output zero. But if one of them is the number one, it will output a one. The reason why this is interesting is because if we combine the results of both of those together, then you can get binary numbers. So this is zero, one, one, and two. I'm not going to explain different number bases and things like that. That's a whole other video. But um, we're used to decimal base numbers, base 10. Binary is base 2. So once you reach 2 of one digit, you get one number of the next. And so constructing this right here using gadgets and wires and things like that, you are able to get computers to count which is very important to do any kind of math. So now that I've explained how gates work and what we need to make, I wanted to put all that together and create a simple redstone system in Minecraft that could pull off the same thing. So the first step, of course, was to build the gates. Uh, here's a simple AND gate. The way I have these constructed is you can have the two inputs in front and you can tell they're on when the redstone lantern lights up and then I have this piece here which executes the code see it keeps this part disconnected until I flick this that way we can set this up however we want hit the button and then run it so for the AND gate both of them have to be on in order for the output lantern to light up see there we go and so the AND one was pretty easy um, but there, there was an easier way to build it, and so I'm going to be using that one. Uh, this one's a bit more complicated because it uses torches, especially if you don't know how redstone works. Uh, this one's a little bit simpler because it uses pistons and connects and disconnects everything. But uh, this one does the same thing. If I flick one, nothing happens. If I don't flick any, nothing happens. Only when I flick both of them do we get an output. And that's good. We can use that. That's simple logic. I got stuck there for a while and I f was finally able to construct the exclusive OR gate we need. As you can see it actually includes an AND gate in the design which is interesting but this one only runs when one of them is on. So if both of them are off nothing happens. If we turn one on it lights up. Uh, let's try both of them on. Nothing. And one on. Boom. So we have the two gates. Now all we have to do is combine them together to create a, um, a result. And so I have a very, very simple binary addition computer. So both of these is one number. Both of these are the inputs. If it's off, it's a zero. If it's on, it's a one. And so we can actually add numbers now. We, we can do that. So you can only add one digit binary numbers, so zeros and ones, but it's something nonetheless. The output here is a little different. Um, this is the ones place and this is the twos place. It would actually probably be better to look at them from this side. Um, if this one lights up, you add one to your number. If this one adds up, you add two to your number. And when you add those together, you have your output. So if we do this, one lights up. So zero plus one is one. That's pretty simple. If we do two of them, 1 plus 1 is 2. Bam. Got it. Simple math. Maybe 
overcomplicated. So once I had that, I cleaned it up a little bit, made this one as the one's digit, the two's digit. Right now there's zero. Uh, and it just, it's the same thing, it just looks a little nicer. Yeah, see, there we go. Um, looks kind of messy, which is why I built it a third time, but I just color coded it. So blue is the execution, yellow is moving blocks, green is the code, and then pink is the display. So color coding it, it makes it so much easier. I highly recommend it. So this one does the same thing. It just, again, looks a little nicer. And here is where I got really, really, really stuck. I got stuck. I couldn't figure out how to add more digits, either to the input or to the output. And then about a week or two ago, it hit me. I figured out how to do it. And I built this boy. He has two digits per input and have can have a three digit output um, and uh, yeah that equates to you can have an input on both of them of three and then you can have maximum output of six so let's uh, let's do some math real quick let's do like three plus two so we should get five so that one and that one should light up yep so this is the fours place twos place and ones place so one plus four is five so there we have it boys it's working it's a working machine uh, let's try something else one plus one should be two got it uh, so as you can see this design works pretty well and again it's color coded uh, it looks a little more complicated but it's really not it's the same design just kind of repeated uh, the green of course is the code the red and blue are kind of the transfers between the code um, there's different uh, rows and columns of these blocks of code to calculate the different digits. Uh, blue right here is the top number input and red is the bottom number input. This light blue is the execute and pink is display again. So this was getting pretty good and I had figured out a system I could just repeatedly build this on and on to make it bigger and so I did and I added more features as well. So this is the <laughs> climax of this whole experiment, um, is this big machine. It can have up to a value of 15 and can output a value of 15. And you might only notice there's only one number here. It's because this one can store memory. This calculator can store and remember the number you put in. So. Uh, we can see that number here at this display. One's digit, two's digit, fours, and eights. And then an extra block, which I haven't built that part yet. I could add another digit, it would just take a lot more work. So right now we have zero in the calculator. So whenever I punch in a number and hit this add number button, it will add it to whatever value is here meaning that you could add lists of numbers and I think you could potentially multiply with this. Uh, I haven't experimented that far yet, but let's go ahead and test it with something. Let's do like a six, hit the button, give some time to think about it, six, plus, I don't know, uh, nine. I think that'll barely fit in the calculator. Let's see if it can actually do it. Oh, it did it. Some It's a little quirky due to redstone timing and all the repeaters and stuff, but it, it did it. Um, I'm very happy about that. So uh, that's actually the maximum it can count to. If we try to overload it to 16, actually let's just do that now, it should roll over. Yeah. See, it would have put a light here, but that part hasn't been built yet. Uh, so we just kind of <laughs> overloaded the system. So this one is pretty slick. I'm very proud with how this one turned out. Um, and it also has the potential to just keep stacking and add more and more. So real quickly, <laughs> let me show you this one. Let me show you how this one works. Uh, this one's significantly bigger than the others, but really, it once you break it down, it's not as bad as it looks. Uh, pink here, uh, this pink, that's magenta, pink. This is the lever inputs. 
and as you can see the line is severed until we hit the execute button the add number button which is all the orange so as you can see uh, that spreads all throughout the code doing stuff uh, the pink then enters the code again you've seen this and then when a digit is fully calculated it'll come out into one of these memory banks each of these memory banks corresponds to one of the digits in the output so this is the ones digit it's stored in here and then that's the two uh, four and eight down there uh, once it goes in here it'll determine whether it needs to adjust the variable this yellow block here will be in different states either right either right here or right there depending on what number needs to be in there I believe this is the zero state and it flips there if it's a one uh, and then from there the numbers go through the pink uh, to the output but then they also do one other thing there's another lower set of lines that runs back into the code that allows us to use the memory we've stored in the banks put it back into the code and add on to it using the pink line the, our main input line so that's how I'm able to add numbers that we've already put in with the ones we're just adding in and the little glowstone bits I need to explain those that's where you could expand it I kind of put them there as little to do's uh, just in case I wanted to expand it I'd know every little spot that would need to be expanded see there's some over there um, so like say if if I gave someone this world they could just keep stacking on code uh, this gray line here is the clear button it goes through and sets all the memory banks to zero which effectively sets the output number to zero so yeah uh, that's all I got if you need more detail if you're still curious about how exactly this works uh, let me know in the comments or contact me however else you know to contact me and um, yeah I'll talk you through everything things like the memory banks are kind of complicated to explain in a video um, but yeah uh, thanks for watching